Hello! In this video, we will talk about scalping. You will learn about the scalping modes, what they are for, and how to use them. We will also talk about tools and settings. This video will be useful for both beginners and those who have been doing 3D graphics for some time. So let's get started. But first, I want to answer one question. I am often asked how and where I learn 3D graphics. And my answer is always the same. The best way for me to learn is through courses. That's why I want to recommend an online school called Wing Fox, where I personally take courses. For example, I currently starting to learn Unreal Engine, so you can join me in the course on creating a post-apocalyptic environment in Unreal Engine 5. The course is designed for beginners and covers all stages of creating cinematics from preparation to uploading videos on social media. So if you are interested, you will find links to this course as well as other courses that I can vouch for in the video description. And now let's continue our video. Let's switch to sculpting mode. Also I enabled this add-on so you can see what I am clicking on. I will be using a graphics tablet because it allows for better control. If you are also using a graphics tablet, go to Edit, Preferences, Select Input and activate Emulate's 3 button mouse. So now, by pressing Alt and moving the pen, we can rotate around the object. Pressing Alt and Control allows us zoom in and out, and holding Alt and Shift lets us navigate in space. As for me, this navigation is pretty good. If you are using a mouse, everything will work as usual. Let's move on to the scalping tools. On the left we have a menu with brushes that we can use in our work. For example, let's take this one, which is Grab Brush. The hotkey is G. We can also choose tools directly from the menu. Now we can use it. By pressing F key we can adjust the brush size and pressing Shift F we can adjust its strength. I'm moving the pen on the tablet and moving vertices of the cube. Also, I want to increase the brush strength with Shift F. We can sculpt like this, but cube hasn't enough vertices. So let's press Layout to exit sculpting mode. Now let's add subdivision surface modifier. A little increase the value and apply this modifier. Let's return to Sculpting mode, and now we can sculpt it. So now it looks better with more geometry. If I press X, I will select Draw Brush. I decrease its size using F, and we can try how it works. We can see that there aren't enough polygons at the moment, so we need to increase the quantity. There are several ways to achieve that. The first one is called Dynotopo. The second one is Remesh and the last one is Multi-Resolution. So let's start with first one. We can activate it by clicking here. So we can see that the mesh has transformed into triangles. Now we can add new polygons directly to the model. By the way, by pressing Ctrl we can apply the opposite action of the brush. So now I am pushing the geometry of this model. This work in all sculpting modes. Also we can try different tools and everything will work fine. Next in the settings we can also change the details. Higher value means less polygons we generate. Also geometry is added relative to the camera. So the farther our camera is, the larger the new polygons will be. To fix this we change the detailing to constant, and now regardless of our position in space, the polygon sizes will always be the same. By increasing the resolution value, we increase the level of detail. It's convenient for creating such details and quickly forming complex features. So now I will exit sculpting, delete this object and add a new cube. By using Ctrl-3 combination, I will add a subdivision surface modifier to the cube. I apply this modifier and return to sculpting. Using the grab brush I change the shape of the object. And now let's use Remesh, which means recompute and create new geometry. This can be done at the menu at the top, but it's more convenient if we press R and adjust the value. 
I press on the tablet to confirm the grid size. Next, to confirm this, I press Ctrl-R and we can see that all the geometry has been recalculated. We can sculpt again and now everything is much more detailed. I stretch out everything again and we can see that we have some problem areas with the geometry. But that's not a problem. We can press Ctrl-R and the geometry will be recalculated. Also, I want to use the inflate brush a bit and then repeat Ctrl-R several times. And now we can see that the problem areas are gone. Let's select the smooth brush and smooth out the geometry. Additionally, this method allows us to combine different objects into one. To do this, I exit sculpting mode and add a new cube to the scene. Then, holding shift, I select two objects and press Ctrl J and join them into one but the geometry is not shared. So in sculpting mode, I press Ctrl R. Now it's all one object and there is no topology inside. And we can work with it. To smooth without selecting the smooth brush, I press and hold shift and work with the pen. Mostly we will use this method in sculpting and I recommend you practice with it. You can try create something. And the last thing I want to show you is another way to increase the level of detail, which is multi-resolution. So let's add a new cube. Then add a subdivision surface modifier to it by using Ctrl 2. Apply this modifier and add another one, multi-resolution. Press subdivide a few times and then enter sculpt mode. Now we can add nice details to our sphere. The main advantages of this method are that everything looks very smooth and we can easily bake data from a high poly to low poly model. Here is an example of how it works. I have a model with great geometry. And if I add a multi-resolution modifier with a level of 2, in sculpting mode I can add details to this model. For example, by using Shift-C, I select the crease brush and now I can add wrinkles to our model. Now, exiting sculpting mode and changing the subdivision level of this modifier, we can see how it affects the level of details. This modifier will allow us to bake data from high poly to low poly objects without any problems. So that's all I wanted to talk about sculpting in Blender today. I hope this video was useful for you and you found a lot of interesting things. If you are interested in this topic, let me know in the comments. I will be grateful for your likes and subscriptions. All the best and see you!